Support for Tom's Brain comes from Uber. Get your free £10 credit by using the code UberTomPod. T-O-M-P-O-D. Join now and get your first £10 ride for free. This is Tom's Brain, the Thomas McNabb podcast, and I am your crazy sleep-induced, tea-drinking, bed-laying, med she wrote watching guide through the next 45 minutes of what will be a retelling of the past two weeks of my life and some past events from my life from my very interesting life to some people yet for me who actually has to live it it's quite dull and repetitive. But equally, I'm very fortunate that I get to relax and take the time out to do this. If there are any new listeners, first of all, thank you. Second of all, why? Third of all, let me just explain a little bit about what the Tom's Tom's brain is. Tom's brain is me. Um, it's all the thoughts that go on inside my head, and hopefully, it will shed some light on life with the condition known as congenital erythroid plastic porphyria which not a lot of people live with. In fact, less than 200 people in the world live with it. And it's a very rare illness and not a lot is known about it. And there is no cure. And recently I was trialing a steroid of artificial ipoatin to boost my blood levels because my blood cells lose this part of them the red blood cells called ipoatin and my body loses it and in the process of which it stains my bones stains my teeth other things and it makes my skin photosensitive which means I'm allergic to sunlight and the hope was to keep me from having blood transfusions at the rate at which I am because at the moment I have them every two weeks because I'm healthier with other people's blood than I am with my own. The more of my own blood my body weight makes, the less red blood cells I have, the weaker I feel, and the more likely I am to infection. Speaking of which, I have an infection at the moment, but I don't know what kind of infection it is. There's just nastiness inside my mouth. Um, but I would put that down to the fact that on Wednesday I was in contact with rather a lot more people than I usually would be because I went to a funeral and I don't know why I had a razor infraction on me, as if it was a good thing. 
I went to a funeral. It was the funeral of my grandma. And previous listeners, hi, previous listeners, how are you doing? I was pretty little that is going. Are you enjoying it? That's a joke for old listeners. If you're a new listener and you feel left out, then go back and, and listen to episode 10. So, old listeners may remember that on New Year's Day, I talked to you about my grandma's funeral, and that was my dad's mum, and the grandmother was altogether mentally, physically fit, and died of old age. My other grandma, my mum's mum, she lived a very challenged life with mental illness and her suffering has been quite long and drawn out and so she was in her 70s um, the last time I saw her was four years ago at Christmas with the family, we all went to her nursing home and had a little Christmas celebration. And I felt like that was a decent enough memory to leave it on because it was quite apparent she didn't have very long left. I didn't really expect it to be four years, but I didn't want to risk seeing her again and seeing her in a state that I would forever remember her in. So I, you know, I can think back and remember her being happy and loving. And my grandma didn't take care of me as much as my dad's mom. She did do her fair share when I was growing up because her house was directly outside my primary school. So sometimes me and my sister would go there after school and I have fond memories of playing there and the love and care that I got from my grandma. It's funny, I'm thinking how easy it is to talk about this. I'm not really affected by the death because I think I've said previously it's something that I've had to face head on quite early in my life because the doctors who diagnosed me told my mum that I was going to live to be 10 years old and for your information I turned 29 this year and I still kind of feel like I'm living under that shadow I don't expect to be around for very much longer but the reality is my lifespan is probably well into my 40s, maybe even 60s, depending on what kind of treatment I could receive. So with all this prior experience of life, I was sad for everyone else, and it was very different to my grandma McNabb's funeral. This was a celebration of life. Um, It was conducted by a celebrant. And I was asked to read out a poem. And before we get on to that, can I just ask, am I saying that right, poem? Because... 
I've never noticed it before, but when everybody else asked me to read out a poem, they said poem. And that to me sounds wrong. I'll consult my writer's group on, on next Wednesday. But I feel like I'm in the right. But there were four people who pronounced it poem. So it was picked out by my mum's sister. She has two sisters. And I was asked if I'd be able to read that because nobody else would have been able to keep their composure. I kind of just fell into my lap, really. My mum was going over some poems and my auntie had picked out one and my mum asked. She couldn't get a sense of it, so she asked me to read it out loud. So I read it off a text message. And I just lo was looking at the phone, reading it. And then when I looked up, my mum was in tears. <laughs> and so she asked me, could I read it like that at the funeral? Because it was really nice. I don't know what. I, I just guess I, I guess it's a good thing, really, because it means some of you listening to this right now are beguiled by my speak public speaking. It's not really public speaking when I'm in my bed. So I got up to read the poem pretty near the beginning. And then I got to sit back down and enjoy hearing about my grandma's life. And I did enjoy it. Because half of the stuff that I heard, I had never heard before. And I didn't even know. My grandma was an, an identical twin. I never knew my granddad because he passed away when I was only a baby. But you know, they were together all their like all his life. I don't know if I should admit this. I think I have. I've already, I've, we've we've been down this road before. My granddad was descended from Roman Egyptians, um, and what's really nice is that my Mum, my dad, and my stepdad all grew up together as friends. So, my they have a shared history. My dad's brother was my stepdad's best friend in high school. So... My dad was there at my grandma's funeral because, you know, th this had been, like, his mother-in-law. And, you know, I, I asked him, like, how much of that red out was accurate? And he said, I know all of it. One of the major things that is obviously alien to me is the fact that for like the first years of my mum's and my her sister's life, they lived in a house that didn't have an indoor toilet. And you can be really selfish and forget that life existed before you were here. And you have a lot to owe for being here. I think some people don't take the time to stop and and thank previous generations for doing things. I like giving us indoor plumbing. 
I'm not specific, speaking specifically about that, but for instance, it's worth being thankful for everything. So it was sad for seemingly everyone else. And I feel kind of awkward not feeling like I feel like I should be crying. It's a fear of mine to laugh at a funeral. But I'm allowed to feel how I want to feel. Like there's no specific way I'm supposed to feel. I did feel sad for my mum. And I still do because she had a lot riding on this funeral to let everything go. And, you know, two days later, I was talked to her and she said she wasn't feeling any different. She said she still felt like she had this, like, crap hanging over her. And, you know, I can relate to that, you know, pinning your like your hopes on a certain day and you see you know that's once I get there and get over that hill everything's going to be better and the reality is actually it's just the same old same old different day speaking of days yesterday was Friday the 13th and this is podcast number 13. So I didn't record it yesterday because I was suffering from a little triskaidekaphobia, which is the fear of the number 13. Paraskidtrikadekaphobia. Paraskidtrikadekaphobia is fear of Friday the 13th. And I know that off by heart. <laughs> Friday the 13th isn't my favourite horror anthology series. It, that g- title is held by Halloween. But I do love this whole notion of bad luck. And I've been very fascinated by the fear of bad luck. The, f- the fact... <laughs> the fact that the, f- the fear leads you to, I can't, I can't describe it really, what I'm trying to get at is, I was pretty fascinated with it as a kid, and whether or not it was to do with my treatment, and I wanted to believe that I was cursed, that there was a reason I was going through this, whether that would be easier to tell myself than the fact that this is just the way life is. There's no divine reason. <clears throat> For whatever reason, I focused on bad luck. And when I was about 10, I wrote a based on true story about my life called bad luck because I'd won this little plastic Santa ring at the winter banana and after wearing it I became fixated on bad things that had happened to me like bumping my head and spilling my water and I got it into my head that the ring was cursed so I buried it in my garden and that's not where the curse ended obviously because there was no curse it was just my life shortly after that I was admitted into hospital with suspected meningitis so I wrote all that into this story called myself Tony and I'm thinking about reading it out (laughs) Well, I say I'm thinking about reading it out. I've already read it out. (laughs) Don't play coy with me. 
I've already read it out. But I read it out last year. So I'm finally going to play this little sound bite, which is, it's going to change the whole tone of the podcast. So I'm going to give you some nice intro music to ease you into it. Based on a true story written by Thomas John McNabb, age nine. Age nine me had no appreciation for grammar or apostrophes or commas and punctuation. Oh look, there's a comma. Good God. I shouldn't I I need to just read this once through so you can just get a picture. This was based on my actual belief. Okay, so I might have jazzed it up a bit, but I genuinely did think that this plastic Santa ring was cursed. Spoiler alert. Okay, so a few things you need to know. Um, Tony is me. Jane is my friend Joanne. And I actually sold this. For 5p. Most things are made up, except for the fact that I believe that the ring is cursed and that I told Joanne. Um, and also, I'm going to be using American accents because I, this is based on a true story and everything that I wrote was in my head taking place in an American high school. It's fueled by Sit by the Bell and Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark? Okay. Which was actually probably Canada. Okay, so let's say Canadian, but it's probably going to sound American because I don't really do a Canadian accent. Bad luck, based on a true story. Tony was at his school fair playing on a game. He won this nice little ring with a plastic Santa. Somehow this was linked with his this, connected with his friend Jane. The first day back at school was fine to start off with, but dinner time, trouble begun. Splash, as the water went all over the table. Jane? Yeah? This ring is somehow giving me bad luck. Yeah. So? Well, I think it might be connected onto you. Jane stared in surprise, then laughed. <laughs> Get real. Look, if you've got bad luck, don't go spreading it. She carried on laughing as Tony went away in disappointment. The next day, Jane went over to Tony. She looked worried. What's wrong? Look, I believe you. Just get this curse off me. I can't. I think it's something to do with my ring. Yeah? Well, if you don't do something soon and I die, it'll be your head, Tony. When Tony got home, he buried the ring and hoped that would be the last of it. But it wasn't. He looked worried more worried than he did when this started. Jane, I've got something to tell you. The bad luck's still here. I'm sorry, Tony. I've broken your ring. Yes. Thanks, Mom. The end. Dot, dot, question mark. Is literally as it reads on the page. So, what do you think? <laughs> I can't believe I got away with selling that. <laughs> like, people legitimately spent 
money to buy that. I mean, the money went to school, to school fund, to fund to primary school. But still. Okay, so that's what it looked like on paper. Here's, I'm going to embellish it and read it again. And, and how I think in my head it was supposed to come out that my mediocre writing skills didn't convey it in such a eloquent way as I could do now. Tony was at his junior high school fair when he happened upon this game of chance. Spin this wheel and wherever it lands, you may get a prize, you may lose. Tony won and he got a mystery prize. It turned out to be this little plastic Santa ring. Cool, Neo, Tony thought to himself. If only he knew what was about to happen. It was somehow cursed. Somehow, he just knew, deep down in his gut, it was linked with his best friend, Jane. So, being the decent fellow he was, he just went up and told Jane, oh, Jane is my... Hey, Jane, I think this ring that I won, it's got a plastic center on it, but darn it, it's cursed, and... I think it's going to curse you, too. You better watch out. What? Ha 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 ha. You're a riot, Tony. I'm going to go back to my Fruit Loops. Make me laugh like this tomorrow. And they went their separate ways that night. And so the next day at school, having nothing bad happen to him, Tony was approached by Jane, and she looked like death had befallen her. She grabbed him by the collar and shook him without warning. What did you do to me, you bastard? <laughs> I didn't do anything. It's this ring. It's this gosh darn ring. I just don't know what happened. I won it, and I thought it was going to be fun, but oh golly gosh, it just turned out to be cursed. Well, I don't know how you're going to manage it, but you better get this goddamn curse off me. <laughs> or I'm going to kill you and all your family. Jane, aren't you overreacting a little bit? Just do it! Okay. So... Tony just tried burying the ring, and he went back to school the next day and told Jane, I buried the ring. And Jane accepted it. And then when Toby got home that night, still having nothing bad happened to him, but yet apparently something bad has happened to Jane, and we haven't Found out she just she's dead. Tony walks in and his mum is like, Oh, I was doing some gardening today and oh god, I like totally broke your ring. What the fuck was I doing in the garden anyway? <sighs> I hate you. I wish I'd had an abortion. Thanks, Mom. Gee, I'm not cursed anymore. Or am I? So, yeah. As, as you see, the, 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 the truth behind the story is a lot um, better than the fiction, which is odd. Well, sometimes it's like that in real life, but usually the based on a true story is embellished to the point of unfathomable reality, but I kept it so grounded that it just 
turned out to be very, very dull. But there you go. It's an, a window into my mind. But we're not done there. We have Bad Luck 2. As I hinted, The Curse of the Rain was in Toga. Once again, verbatim, this is what is written on the page. Bad Luck 2 in Roman numerals, based on a true story. A year had passed, and Tony had come to the bonanza, but no games, no silly little rings, his own stall, selling his magazine, Air Track. One, two, three, that's seven P, please. Tony had forgotten about the bad luck. But it came back, just after the new year, with nothing, like history repeating itself. So that's why I came to you, Dr. Poin. I see. Bring, bring! Hello? Hi, guy. Shame you don't know me. You could learn a lot what's going to happen. The phone went dead. Then he realized, why wasn't Jane getting terrorized? So he phoned her up. Hi, Jane. Yeah? Have you been getting any bad luck lately? No. Uh. Okay. And he slammed the phone down. He woke up by the door slamming. Why did he dream something like that? A shake sucked him from getting out of bed. He was sick. Mom! Tony had not been feeling well, but this was too far. He was terrified. He went into hospital with suspected meningitis. To be continued! I have to say that, judging by the first one, that is a thousand times better. Still pretty dire. You can see what I'm getting at. This was when we were getting to the truth because after the ring came this admission into hospital. But that, considering my life, that is not abnormal. That is, but I put it down to being cursed on a ring. Okay. So, continuing. Bad Luck 2, we move on to Bad Luck 3, based on a true. Bring, bring! Hello, how's Tony? His temperature's gone down. Oh, goodbye! <laughs> It was the summer holiday, so he had time to get properly better. It was back to school and no bad luck so far. 24th of the 1st, 1996. The day was bad. My stars said bad luck and that's all I needed. P.E. Just before, actually, someone really knocked my head. So I didn't cry, but it came, and I said I was okay, but I wasn't. Then I bent down to pick my sock up, and somebody pushed me, and I hit my head on the table leg. I felt so unlucky, so then I wanted to cry. I just realized that that was all in speech quotes. I'm going to do it again in my cheesy Tony American accent. I was back to school and no bad luck so far. 24th of the 1st, 1996. The day was bad. My star said bad luck and that's all I needed. P.E. Just before actually, someone really knocked my head. So I didn't cry, but it came and I said I was okay, but I wasn't. Then I bent down to pick my sock up, and somebody pushed me, and I hit my head on the table leg. I felt so unlucky, 
so then I wanted to cry. That's all the bad luck, but there's some little bits of bad luck I missed out. Our buzzer went off to say there was a fire practice, so we went out like normal, except no one else was out there. That night, I went to my friends and told him. He said it might be a short circuit. But he said when I asked to be inconspicuous. So when I asked, she said no. So it's a very good mystery. The end. Ark. <laughs> what? <laughs> The cliffhanger of Bad Luck 2 was so good compared to Bad Luck 1. And the the reveal was like his mum didn't even care. <laughs> the the conversation literally went, Hello, how's Tony? His temperature's gone down. Oh goodbye. <laughs> that is literally all I wrote. Oh, Jesus H. Christ. (laughs) (laughs) I sincerely apologize for that madness. But it kind of ties in with Friday the 13th, episode 13, and also ties in with a little little something that happened to me this week, before Wednesday, in, in a way that I put on little characters and gave birth to them. There are two other people who do that. And I'm a very big fan of them. I'm talking about the Throne Shade podcast, hosted by Brian Safi and Aaron Gibson. And they've been hosting it for well over three years. Anyhow, over the course of 170 odd episodes, they invented these characters through which to promote the donation to the Maximum Fun Podcast Association under which they are living. (laughs) What I mean is Not all of us have free reigns on our podcast to take them anywhere we see fit. Some of us are under the banner of a larger group. The biggest of which I can think of is Earwolf, you may know. Nerdist, you may know. And obviously like the BBC, the BBC are under the banner under which many little podcasts appear. So they invented these characters to promote what is known as a fun drive, where people donate money. But they do that online. But you see, back in the day, back when I was a kid, (laughs) when there were toilets outside, you would have to phone a number to donate money and you would get somebody in a call center on the other end. They kind of, they, I don't know if they still do that, but they try to still do that. And I'm specifically remembering like Taylor Swift was on answering the phone. I don't know when they did that. It's probably like stand up to cancer or something like that. But for those people who still use phones, apparently that's still a thing. So that is how that came about. They impersonated these fake phone calls and invented like impossible 
to deal with characters who would be working for the fund drive and instead of you know just saying can I take your credit card number and how much would you like to donate obviously that's not the point the point is to take it into this absolute chaotic mess of hilarity and they did that quite often enough and they did that so often that I got to thinking they, well, they stopped doing that and then I got to thinking how much I miss that and how those like phone calls would be easy enough to play back to back and so I thought well I'm, I'm going to do this for myself and then it took so long because you know, I had to listen to all the old episodes make a note of when such phone calls occurred um, so you know that was listening to over a hundred episodes each of which were over 45 minutes long so I'm not going to do the maths but that's a long time plus isolating the files editing them so yeah I've been working on that since last year and maybe that's where I kind of got the inspiration from my characters voices from in fact I can definitely say that's where I got the inspiration from my characters voices from so there's no way I would have been that foul mouthed had I not had their previous <laughs> their influence thrusted upon me and so rather than it drive me crazy and edit it all in one go I spent far too long and I finally finished it on Valentine's Day and I emailed it to them thinking I don't I, I thought but my train of thought was I'm gonna enjoy this maybe other fans would too and lo and behold they do in the droves the episode was released at the start of this week and many 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 hundreds of people all over the world are listening to an episode that I've edited of Throwing Shade which is pretty big news it's, it's like the biggest news and I tried telling like my mom and my sister and yeah it's hard to tell them how big it is but I hope you understand that I'm pretty stoked and chuffed <laughs> and it just makes me want to see them live all the more so I really hope 2015 is the year that they come to England or maybe even Scotland there's apparently a fringe festival which everyone raves about so quite honestly that has been the highlight of my year and I don't expect it to get any better so anything that happens from here on out is merely icing on the cake and cherry on top and Papa's possibly going to that cereal cafe but yes first and foremost went to Starbucks for the first time since January I got given the most hideously crafted drink and sat next to strangers. It was just awful, but I, I needed to go. First of all, because I got £15 credit burning a hole in my phone <laughs> and the wake of the funeral, as it were, was at a bar called Nappers. I've never been before, but apparently my grandma went with everyone else. It was very nice, it was very hospitable, and I had some garlic bread and sweet potato fries. And then I went next door to the Starbucks to have a chocolate cappuccino. And not content with that, I asked my sister to drop me off 
at Lane's Espresso, where I picked up a brownie and a further mocha, decaf mocha. Um, because I didn't want to go back home because everybody was heading back home, including, so this was like my mum, my stepdad, my dad, my sister, my nephews, and my sister's boyfriend. Um, I just wanted to like chill out because, you know, it's like I said, I had a lot more human interaction than I'm used to, and as such, I've broken out in what can only be described as ickiness. So I needed to chill the f out. But having said that, I needed somebody. The only person who I could really talk to at the wake was my dad. And even then he got drunk, so he was kind of difficult to talk to towards the end. Uh, I'm not talking about, like, violently drunk. <laughs> I should probably reiterate that. Just, you know, like... <laughs> oh, God. He just enjoyed relaxing, shall we say. So, when I got into town on my own, I felt like I didn't want to be on my own, and I didn't want to be here. So, I went to look for my friend Emily, and I don't know if you remember Emily. I met her when she worked at Day Golf Nash, and now she works at Bar Burrito. And I, went, I didn't go to Bar Burrito. I walked past the establishment three times, looking through the window to see if she was there, and she wasn't. So I got on my bus and headed home, and lo and behold, who should get on the bus but Emily? So that felt pretty special, because she was the one person that I wanted to see, and when I thought I wasn't going to see her, she appeared. So I kind of felt like, hmm, maybe if divine intervention exists, maybe somebody was looking out for me and knew that I wanted a hug from my good friend, Emily. And I came home and I sneaked in to my own house when everybody was awake and listening to music and being merry, I sneaked upstairs, because, you know, so that's what I wanted to do, I wanted to, to kind of, like, chill out, but I didn't want to do it in public, so that's kind of why I came home and didn't tell anyone that I'd come home, and it felt kind of weird, it is weird, right? Yeah. Well, we should probably discuss that on a later episode, because we've reached the end, people. How was that for you? If this really is the first episode you've ever listened to, you are crazy. But thank you. I'm just kind of counting on maybe that maybe I've got one new listener because of the whole throwing shade exposure. But maybe, maybe not. Maybe nobody cares. So if not, then thank you old listeners for keeping with me and finding me on this crazy, crazy account of my previous, not even a week three days. Got a haircut. Anyway, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram to see the haircut, I am at Tom's Brain. If you would like to email me, tomsbrain2 at yahoo.co.uk. There is a Facebook page. It is facebook.com forward slash Tom's Brain Podcast. Until next time, stay alive. Stay sane. Stay sober. (laughs) 